We're going to be talking about a very special group of motions called the privileged motions. Now, how could a motion be privileged? Well, we know that we have the main motion, and we know that the main motion will yield to subsidiary motions. However, there's a group of motions that are even higher than the subsidiary motions, and those are the, are the privileged motions. Now, the reason that the privileged motions are privileged is because they don't really bring substantive business before the assembly. What they do is relate to a very few specific items that affect the assembly, and we will be going through each of the privileged motions one by one. Going from the lowest ranking one to the highest ranking one, the lowest privileged question is to call for the orders of the day. The next highest one is a question of privilege. The next highest one is a recess. The next highest one is to adjourn. And the highest ranking motion is the motion to fix the time to which to adjourn. Now, that can get a little bit confusing, especially the question of privilege. Question of privilege is not the same thing as a privileged question. It's just a type of privileged question. As I said, we're going to be going through these motions one at a time and understand each one because each one can be incredibly powerful. Now, the thing that if another thing that's special about privileged motions is that they can sometimes interrupt a speaker and we'll talk a little bit about when you are allowed to do that. It's pretty rare for a motion to actually be able to interrupt somebody in the middle of their speech. Finally, there's one idea that is really important to understand about privileged motions and that idea is that a privileged motion isn't always a privileged motion. What I mean by that is, just as an example, say that there's no business pending and you make a motion to adjourn, that motion is technically not privileged because there's nothing pending at the time. In fact, that motion might even be amendable, like we move to adjourn in 30 minutes or something like that. You could change the motion slightly. What makes a motion have its status of being privileged is that you're making the motion while something else is pending. So if there's a motion on the floor and it looks like debate is gonna go on forever and people are ready to leave, somebody can, make, can get the floor and just make the motion, I move to adjourn. That motion is now privileged and if it's adopted, even though there's a motion on the floor, the meeting ends right there. Now, that privileged motion to adjourn, however, cannot be changed in any way. So you couldn't make an amendment on it to say move that we adjourn in 30 minutes. You're either ending the meeting right then and there, or you're allowing the meeting to continue. So to reiterate, for a motion to have its privilege status of the five that we mentioned earlier, it must be made while something else is pending, and it, usually it cannot be qualified in any way. It's either an up or down vote on the privileged motion. See if you can answer the questions below. If you have to, you can rewatch parts of this video. And what we'll do next is go through each of the motions individually, starting with the motion to call for the orders of the day. We'll see you there.